What's up guys, it's Alec Merrick 101, and I am here today with the G&G &G Mark 18 Mod 1. Now, it says Mark 18 on like GI and Evike, but this is not a Mark 18, the real one is about $200, where this gun is only about $190, $180, depending on if you get it for coupon codes. And uh, it's a plastic rail system, or if you want to get the airsoft ones, about 120 by Mad Bull. But yeah, it kind of looks pretty cool. I think it looks pretty dope. They include these ladder rail covers, as you call them, and I really like that it's kind of tan and black. So we're going to start up up top right here. This is actually an AAC flash hider. It will accept actual AAC um, suppressors to kind of that thread over this. But obviously it's pretty plastic as everything else in this entire gun is. And next you have the legit Mark 18 rail system with even like, they even replicate like the screws, the two screws on the top and then the one on the bottom. And it is, like it actually does feel pretty comfortable to shoulder. Um, I don't appreciate that they kind of stole it from the like actual Mark 18, but I guess, I mean, you can call it kind of whatever you want. I know VFC calls theirs the mod, or the Mark 18 mod one, but theirs is actually has a nice rail system on it. Um, standard combat machine body. A lot of this gun is plastic. It's a combat machine. For those of you that are going to look for this gun, you're probably a newer player, and this is just an upgrade off of the standard combat machine. This actually looks cool. You've got some tan, you got a nicer rail system, and then you just have a kind of a cooler magazine as well. Now, with the magazine, actually, you can see something sticking up on the top there. That's actually a magazine um, that feeds all the BBs. So it, it, the follower kind of goes all the way up into the gun. So it'll feed all the BBs. Um, I think that's kind of cool. In this is just a standard G&G &G combat machine gearbox. Pretty simple. You got your aluminum barrel. You got your G&G &G green bucking, which is pretty nice. But the gearboxes um, are pretty inconsistent. This gun had a compression issue when we got it, and Sure Shot Midget fixed it um, because he's good at teching and stuff like that. It's not a huge deal, but G&G &G with the combat machine, just this line is sometimes very um, not reliable and not consistent where they'll produce a lot of decent guns, but they also have some that are, are pretty bad. And this like this gun is just a basic gun. It's, it's nice. You can upgrade it if you want. The bodies are pretty decent. The trademarks, I think, are pretty crappy. I don't really like the, just the, the logo, I guess, is kind of cool. It's somewhat eye-appealing, um, but then they put, like, complete AEG series made in Taiwan. Um, they actually have a serial number on here too, which I think is kind of a cool little addition. Um, have your full little half traveling bolt. Um, you can see that the hop up in there is the standard hop up. All G and G hop ups are the same. You got your little blue um, cover there on the just outside of the gearbox. I think it's kind of cool for the for the cylinder, um, just the cylinder covering. I think I think like the blue kind of looks cool. I don't know. I kind of like different uh, colors. I know for the Ares guns, they actually use different colors of those to determine which gearbox it was, which version it was. Uh, back here we have a metal, one of the few metal parts on here, sling points. This is a dual sling point, so it's actually really nice that they include that stock. And it's a very nice one, like it's, it stays there pretty comfortably, and then you have multiple adjustments, kind of if you want to put it on, uh, put it here, or if you want to put it there, and it just kind of allows it to have a wide range of motion, which I think is really cool. Buffer tube is also metal. <laughs> one thing that's really bad is the front receiver pin is actually plastic. The rear one's metal, but I didn't even know you could make a receiver pin that was plastic. I didn't know that was a thing, but that was kind of surprising. And we're going to go ahead and shoot it real quick. As you can tell, there's nothing in there just to give you a kind of trigger response. It's actually a pretty nice trigger response. Range is about 150 feet. Um, I'll go ahead and just kind of I'm not a huge fan of G&G triggers, but this one actually isn't isn't terrible. It's got a long travel time. You can see how it's got a snappy reset, which I like. It's got a long travel time, and the this is actually with 11.1 lipo, so you're able to get pretty quick trigger response still. I'm impressed by how fast I can actually pull the trigger, and it's not stopping or anything. And then this is on full auto. Gun shoots 360 feet per second, which is pretty good, great for CQB, which is kind of where you're going to use this. You can use this for field play if you want, but it has a fairly short barrel. Uh, standard stock, just tan. I like the tan on this. I think it's a good tan. Standard A2 grip. It's a pretty simple gun, guys, but I would definitely recommend this to you if you're a newer player around the $190 price range. I don't think that's bad for a combat machine. It's a little bit high because combat machines are kind of the cheaper line of guns. But I definitely think this is a pretty good price for you. You can see I kind of have the red dot on there just to kind of look, make it look a little bit cooler. Um, but thanks for liking this video, guys. If you like reviews, go ahead and comment, hey, I really like reviews. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. I also redid all of my background a little bit. And my system of PTW is... 
currently getting better. As you can tell, I have a new light on here and I'm working on it. So it's getting there. If you guys like airsoft guns, that's pretty much what I do on my channel. This has been Alec Mac 1 on 1, and I'll see you guys later. Double wheeled out.